Hello. In this lecture, we'll continue our study of circular trigonometry beyond sine and cosine to the other standard trigonometric functions. Specifically, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent will all be defined in terms of sine and cosine, but now circular trigonometry, not just restricted to angles between 0 and 90 degrees, will compute the values of some of these trigonometric functions. We'll look at how these functions act in different quadrants, whether they're positive or negative, and establish and use some Pythagorean identities. Now for an angle theta, recall that the value of sine theta and cos theta come from points on the unit circle. So if you have any angle theta in standard position, there's a corresponding point on the unit circle, xy, xy in the second quadrant, or perhaps down here in the fourth quadrant. Cosine of the angle is by definition the x-coordinate of this corresponding point on the unit circle, and the sine of theta by definition is the corresponding y point. So here they are as labeled cos theta comma sine theta. Now the other trigonometric functions, tan, cosecant, secant, and cotangent are defined as they have always been in terms of sine and cosine. So the tangent of theta is sine over cosine, the cosecant is one over sine, the secant is one over cosine, and the cotangent is one over the tangent. That happens to just be the cosine divided by the sine if you reciprocate the tangent function. So let's suppose that theta is 5 pi over 4. Let's find the value of all six standard trigonometric functions of this angle theta. So first we're going to find sine and cosine. We're going to make a reference triangle. Now here's the unit circle. 5 pi over 4 is bigger than 4 pi over 4, which is pi, or would point straight left. And then it's an extra 1 quarter pi beyond that, which is half of a quadrant. So we're somewhere here in quadrant 3. In fact, if we make our reference triangle, what's missing is an angle of pi over 4. Beyond pi to point straight left, we went pi over 4 further, which means that this angle here must also be pi over 4. The angles of a triangle must add up to 180 degrees, which is pi radians, and a right angle is pi over 2. And in our reference triangle, with a hypotenuse of 1 in a pi over 4, pi over 4 triangle, we know that the other sides are of length, root 2 over 2, but because we are in quadrant 3, we are labeling the x and y, the horizontal and vertical measurement, as both being negative. Therefore, the coordinates of this point are minus root 2 over 2, comma minus root 2 over 2. The cosine of theta and the sine of theta are defined as the x and y coordinates respectively of this point. Both are the same, it's minus root 2 over 2. Now that we have the cosine and sine established, we can find all four other functions quite quickly. The tangent is the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. Now minus root two over two is some number, but when you divide it by itself, you definitely get one. The cosecant is one over the sine. This is negative two over root two. The secant is one over the cosine of theta, which is the same thing. And the cotangent is one over the tangent, but since the tangent was already computed to be one, 1 over that is 1. Now observe we haven't done any algebraic simplification of cosecant and secant, which could be done but is not necessarily required depending on your specific course. Now if we know what quadrant theta is in, then we can figure out the sine, whether it's positive or negative that is, of sine theta, cos theta, and tan theta. So given x, y on the unit circle corresponding to some angle theta, Cosine of theta is by definition the x-coordinate, sine of theta is by definition the y-coordinate, and tan of theta is the ratio of the two. So therefore, the sine function, which is the y-coordinate, must be positive in quadrants one and two, but negative in quadrants three and four. The cosine, which is the x-coordinate, is positive in quadrants four and one, but negative in quadrants two and three. And if I take a ratio between these two, in quadrant 1, we have positive over positive, which is positive. In quadrant 2, we have positive over negative, which is negative. In quadrant 3, negative over negative, which is positive. And in quadrant 4, negative over positive, which is negative. So given that the sine of theta happens to be a third, and the cosine of theta is negative, can we find the value of all six trigonometric functions of this angle? So for this particular angle, we know the sine of theta is positive, it's one third. We were also told that the cosine is negative. In which quadrant is the sine of theta, the y-coordinate, positive, but the cos of theta, the x-coordinate, negative, positive y and negative x puts you in quadrant two. So we're in quadrant two. So we're somewhere over here pointing to an x comma y. We also know that the y-coordinate is the sine of theta and we were given that that is one third. What we need to find first 
is the x-coordinate. So let's draw a reference triangle. We know that the height is positive one third. We're in the unit circle, so the hypotenuse is one, and this x is what we're trying to find. But by the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus a third squared must be equal to one squared. We can solve this pretty quickly for x. x is plus or minus root eight over three. Okay, so x is plus or minus root 8 over 3. And again, one could simplify root 8, but this is not something we're focusing on here. So x is plus or minus root 8 over 3. But we already know we're in quadrant 2, so we're going to use the negative value of x. So the x of this point is negative root 8 over 3. Therefore, the sine of theta is 1 third. The cos of theta is the x coordinate. We just found that to be minus root 8 over 3. The tan of theta must be the ratio between the two. This simplifies to minus 1 over root 8. Further simplification is possible, but we're not focusing on that. And for the remaining trigonometric functions, those are just reciprocals of the ones we already have. Specifically, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. That would be 3. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. That would be minus 3 over root 8. And cotan is the reciprocal of tan. That would simply be negative root 8. Another example, given that cosine of theta is a quarter and the tangent of theta is negative, can we find the sine of theta? So for this choice of theta, cosine is positive one quarter, tangent is negative. Now cosine is positive in quadrants one and four, tangent is negative in quadrant two and four. Where do they both happen? Quadrant four, that's where theta must be. So wherever our angle is, it's somewhere in quadrant four. We know that the x-coordinate of this point is positive one quarter. We're looking for the sine of theta, that's just the y-coordinate. So let's draw a reference triangle. There we have it. We're looking for y, x is positive one quarter, and since we're in the unit circle, the hypotenuse is one. So by the Pythagorean theorem, we can now solve this for y. y is plus or minus root 15 over four but we know we're in quadrant four, so we're going to pick the negative choice of y. So y, the sine of theta by definition, we've computed to be negative root 15 over four. In both of the previous problems, we repeatedly used the Pythagorean theorem. Specifically, for any point on the unit circle, x squared plus y squared must equal one. But recall, that the cosine of the angle theta is the x-coordinate of the point that it looks at, and sine of the angle theta is the y-coordinate. So taking cos theta equals x and sine theta equals y and plugging it into that expression above, we see that the cosine of theta squared plus the sine of theta squared must equal one. Now this is usually written slightly differently. Sine is put first, that doesn't really matter, you're just changing the order of adding these two terms, but sine of theta in parentheses squared is frequently simply written as sine squared of theta. This is not some new function sine squared being applied to the angle theta. It is the sine of theta in parentheses squared. This is just lazy notation, but it is quite universal. So the sine of theta squared plus the cos of theta squared equals one. We say this aloud as sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one. There are similar equations that relate some of the other trigonometric functions against one another. So starting with what we have above, if we divide both sides by cos squared theta, we would get sine of theta squared over cos of theta squared plus cos of theta squared over cos of theta squared equals one over cos of theta squared. In other words, sine of theta over cos of theta being tangent, we have tan squared theta plus, the second term is cos squared over cos squared of theta, that's just gonna resolve to one, and one divided by cosine of theta is secant, so on the right we have secant squared. Tan squared theta plus one equals secant squared theta. Had we started with our original expression and divided everything by sine squared, we would similarly get one plus cotan squared equals cosecant squared. So these three equations in the boxes are known as Pythagorean identities. They all come from the first one, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one. That's just taking the Pythagorean theorem on the unit circle, x squared plus y squared equals one with the definition that the cosine of theta is the x coordinate and the sine of theta is the y coordinate. Let's use these Pythagorean identities in an example. Given that the sine of an angle is a third and the cosine of an angle is negative, find the tangent of that angle. So we've done this in the past using reference triangles, but we can simply rely on these Pythagorean identities. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one. We know that the sine of theta is a third. 
This allows us to solve for the cosine squared of theta. In other words, cosine of theta is plus or minus root 8 over 3. But we were told that cosine of theta must be negative, so we make the negative choice. Cosine of theta equals negative root 8 over 3. Now that we know the sine and cosine of theta, we can compute the tangent, which is simply sine over cosine. This simplifies down to negative 1 over root 8. And again, algebraic simplification beyond this point, doable, but not our point. Another example, suppose we're given that the tangent of theta is negative 2 fifths and the sine of theta is positive. Can we find the cosine of theta? So now we're going to use the trigonometric identity, the Pythagorean identity, tan squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. Of all of the Pythagorean identities, why use that one? Because it involves tangent and we know the value of tangent. So plugging that in, we get that negative 2 fifths squared plus 1 equals secant squared theta. And from here, we can find that secant squared theta must be 29 over 25. We could at this point solve for the secant of theta, but we were interested in the cosine of theta from the original problem. Cosine of theta is one over secant of theta. So cos squared theta is one over secant squared theta. So since we know that secant squared theta is 29 over 25, cosine squared must be 25 over 29. This allows us to say that the cosine of theta is either plus or minus five over root 29. Now we were given that the tangent was negative and the sine was positive. Therefore, we are in quadrant two. Tangent is negative in quadrant two and four, but in quadrant two and not quadrant four is the sine of theta positive. So theta is in quadrant two, and in quadrant two, the cosine of theta must be negative. So we take the negative choice. Cosine of theta is negative five over root 29. And a final example. Can we simplify the expression secant squared theta minus 1 divided by secant squared theta? Of course we can, but how exactly are we asked to do so? An expression involving a single trigonometric function and no fractions. Now there's two different straightforward ways to do this. We'll do both, but they both rely on Pythagorean identities and other properties of trigonometric functions. So one approach you might take, starting with the original expression, is break up the fraction into two pieces, secant squared theta over secant squared minus one over secant squared. Secant squared over secant squared is just one, and since cosine is one over secant, secant is one over cosine. So therefore, one over secant squared is cosine squared. But now, sine squared plus cos squared equals one. So one minus cos squared must equal sine squared. And now we have a single trigonometric function and no fractions. The wording is a little unclear. The line above one minus cos squared also only has a single trigonometric function, but it has nothing else, which was the implication. Another way to get the same solution, starting from the original expression, secant squared theta minus one over secant squared theta, is to apply a Pythagorean identity to the numerator tan squared theta plus one equals secant squared. In other words, tan squared theta equals secant squared theta minus one. So we're gonna take that numerator of secant squared theta minus one and replace it with tangent squared. Now replacing everything in terms of sines and cosines, tangent squared is sine squared over cos squared, secant squared is one over cos squared. The denominators cancel each other out and we simply have sine squared theta, the same answer as solution one, which is good news, we shouldn't get different answers.